Hi, this is Philip with RTX Honeybees. This build video is going to be about building hive lids. Uh, they're going to be my migratory hive, hive lids, so to speak. They're going to be a little bit modified. They won't have a hole in the top. They'll have some insulation in there uh, because that's kind of what I really want because down here in Texas where we are, it's really hot in uh, second part of July and all through August and, and the bees can really just cook. So I want some insulation separating those bees from the sun. Um, I'm using uh, some plywood that was given to me and it was in sh it was shelves that I had to tear out and they were just one foot pieces. So what I've done is I've actually spliced it together to get the, the rough piece that I'll cut out for those tops. So these are spliced together using a, a biscuit joiner and biscuits, three biscuits in here. Uh, it's a tool I've had for a long time, but I hadn't had the opportunity to use uh, for many years, but it was kind of kind of enjoyed using it again. Didn't make any video of that, but uh, I think I took some steel shots I may put on the screen. Also, I have a, an incredibly cheap table saw, Harbor Freight model. Uh, yeah, shout out to Randy Dirt Rooster McCaffrey. He's got some hot sports opinions on Harbor Freight tools. <laughs> so, uh, on the Harbor Freight tool, it's got about a 12 inch right hand uh, clearance that you can mount the fence on and obviously there's in this build I need a 16 and a quarter inch roughly clearance so I actually built this to make my Texas deep boxes but I just moved the fence a little bit to make it work for this build so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna rip rip it down to the proper width and then we're gonna take it over to the chop saw and cut cut it to length I will not as Joseph Ross says Y'all ready? Let's get started. So this is a part of the top of the top piece, I guess. The shim that people like Ian Stepler and Bob Benny put on theirs to make room, space for like pollen patties. I'm actually going to make, instead of making that three eighths of an inch thick or half inch thick, I'm going to make that an inch and a half shim all the way around. And the reason for that is I'm going to put an inch of insulation and then about a quarter inch, whatever the addition of a piece of double bubble would be and then there's some space in there left over for pollen patties or whatever or whatnot but uh, that's the next piece I'm gonna put pieces along these edges that are 21 I'm sorry 20 and a quarter by inch and a half deep by three quarter inches wide and I'm gonna make those out of solid wood I'm gonna cut those out of these scrap two by fours
I skipped ahead a little bit there. Sorry about that, but uh, I went ahead and added these end pieces. Cut them out of two by fours exactly like I did these side pieces that you guys saw. The only slight difference is I made those seven eighths of an inch wide instead of three quarter. And the reason I did that is because this lid is should be about three eighths of an inch. And I'm sorry. Yeah, three eighths of an inch uh, longer than the hive bodies. I usually make that a quarter for that. I'll have that lip that sits on it. But my boxes tend to warp a little bit sometimes. So I wanted that little bit of extra play. And when I did that, I figured if it was sliding all the way to one side, I didn't want a gap there because it does sit on a three eighths inch ledge. Anyway, that's the only slight change I've made. So now it's kind of decision time. I think I've made the decision, but I've been watching. You know, the reason I'm doing migratory lids is because I kind of want to go to a palleted system on a few of my colonies. So I've been watching how uh, different, you know, mostly commercial beekeepers build their pallets. I've uh, also been watching, I uh, watched some of the videos from William down at Dry Cut, or up at Dry Cut in Oklahoma, um, how he did his. But as I was paying closer attention, some commercial beekeepers don't put the extra little pieces right here. Cleat. Well, let's see. You can't see that, can you? Let me back up a little bit. Don't put the extra cleat right here. Uh, the main reason for that cleat, in my opinion, or at least as, as I've observed, is so the pallet you stack on top of this won't slide forward uh, or backwards and slide off the stack. But I noticed uh, Bob Benny, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name in, here in Texas. I noticed it on their video too. Um, oh, I'll, I'll put the name on the screen. But they don't do it either. And the reason they, at least they don't do it, and I assume Bob doesn't either, is because these pallets aren't always standard. And if you have an interlocking pallet, it's not standard with your system then it's not going to work so if it's flat at least the pallet will stack so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stay with my plan I'm gonna have a piece that comes down here about three inches or so and then I'll have the cleat on top of that and since I am going to use the cleat I'm gonna make this piece that extends down uh, out of plywood, probably even 5 8 inch plywood. I think all it does is keeps the lid from getting picked up by the wind and you know, lets it grab the edge of the box before it blows away. Um, so I'm going to do that uh, and then the cleat will cover up the top grain of the plywood and I'll just run sealant on the bottom of it. Well, I told you guys that I was going to use 5 8 inch plywood here for this piece. But I went to bed, <laughs> and it's funny how when you go to sleep, you start thinking about things that you might uh, be screwing up or doing differently. And I realized that if I use 5 eighths here instead of 3 quarter, that it's going to pull the ends, the total length end, by a quarter of an inch. And if I put my cleats on, which are going to be an inch and a half, then that's going to make me make my pallet uh, runners that interlock have to also come in, which is fine, but that means I'm committing for my system to a uh, 5 8 inch face on these. And I would rather, you know, 3 quarter is what I have more of. Uh, so what I've decided to do is go with a three quarter here so my spacing will be correct on my runners or on my, my cleats and my runners when I build my pallets to match these migratory lids. These pieces are going to be 16 and 3 8 inch wide which matches this width and they're going to be three and a quarter inch long which will give me a one inch overlap front and back. Let's get started.
back, I'll put the cleats on here, front and back. I've decided not to glue those down. I'm going to tack them down. When I, before I paint, I'll caulk so they'll be, they'll be in place and firm enough to, to hold. But if I get into a situation when I'm moving colonies and I've got pallets that aren't going to stack properly because of those cleats, I want to be able to knock those suckers off and keep going. So I'll put them on, but I'm not going to glue them down. Talk to you guys later. Okay, it's time to go outside and caulk and paint. So the step we're on now is the caulking. Caulking all the nail holes. Uh, using this DAP. I think it's like a 35 year or something like that. Alex Plus. 40, 40 years. Okay, uh, decided to get a little footage because it's getting dark. I'll probably be doing this until it's completely dark. I caulked down the sides of these cleats. These cleats were not glued down because I want the option to be able to remove them later if I need to. Caulked the end grains of all plywood, the end grains of all cuts. Uh, if there's a gap here the, where I stitch the concrete, to, I mean the plywood together nail holes all that these will get a coat of kilts 2 primer and two coats of industrial latex oil based enamel and that'll be it for the painting and we'll get into the insulation underneath after that Okay, so I'm painting these white instead of my normal dark gray, and I'm using the uh, oil-based enamel Rust-Oleum uh, for this. This is just the first coat.
Okay, that's the first coat on the tops. I'll uh, paint the bottoms tomorrow morning. And then uh, that'll be the first coat everywhere. One thing about this painting is it goes faster with the second coat. So the first coat takes a while, but the second coat goes real fast. Good morning. I got out uh, this morning and painted the bottom parts of these inner covers. I'm not painting this because this is going to get covered up with the insulation. I'm going to have one inch foam insulation here. Uh, While we're waiting for this paint to dry, we'll go cut some insulation. So the insulation I chose is this Owens Corning. Uh, it's an R5 one inch thickness. And the bees will chew this stuff up. So originally I thought I would protect it with some uh, double bubble here, double reflective insulation. But the cost per colony for the foam is pushing three dollars, and the cost per colony for this is pushing two dollars. So the only reason I had this as part of it <clears throat> was not the insulation value, but to protect it from the bees chewing. Then I sort of had an idea that I think uh, aluminum foil, heavy duty aluminum foil will do the same trick. So that's what I'm going to wrap this in, heavy duty aluminum foil. On my uh, migratory lids, I am going to use the double bubble as an inner cover. So. That's what I got this for. 16 inches wide by 25 feet long. That'll make 12 of those. I'm gonna take this outside and cut it the first time. Then I'll bring it back in. All right, I just laid that on the ground and cut it. Uh, now I'm gonna cut it the other way, other direction, then I'll go test fit it. Check it. You want to come with me? All right, let's see how it does here. Cut's kind of yank, yanky. I don't want to push it down in there too much. I don't want to tear it up to get it out. I think that's going to be okay. really all depends on how much the aluminum foil adds to the thickness of the width. I think we're good. So I'm going to cover this with this heavy duty aluminum foil. I bought this uh, Gorilla brand uh, spray adhesive. Now nothing in this video is sponsored guys even though I'm referring to specific products. So. All right, shiny side up, shiny side down. I'm gonna go shiny side down. I'm gonna take this outside to spray this adhesive on it because I don't wanna get sticky all in my shop. I've got a good coating of spray adhesive on the dull side of this uh, aluminum foil. All right, that's what we got. We'll see if that works out. I'm gonna go ahead and stick one of these in. Uh, for the rest of them, I'm gonna wait till I get both coats of paint 
But I'm just curious as to whether I need to cut it a little bit shorter or not. I think I will be having to cut it a little bit shorter. Let's just see if it fits in there. Yeah, actually. That worked pretty good. Let me guess. Let me show you guys how I plan to make sure that it stays in there. Because, you know, a little bit of propolis and that thing would pop right out when you pulled your top off. I have these little washers. They're called like foam board attachment washers. They're for spreading the load so you don't drill right through your foam board. Um, so that's what I'm going to try. I ordered these off of Amazon. So I don't know how many per panel I'll use. I'm thinking maybe nine of these. But uh, the screw goes in like that. And it should spread the load out. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a one and five eighths inch washer. I should have material thickness of one and three quarters. So that's getting pretty close to coming through. I'm gonna put a few of these in, flip it over, and make sure I'm not coming through the other side. I do have some one and a half that I can use if these don't work. Is this appears to be designed to be able to be pushed in first like that as soon as it starts to compress I'm going to get off of it that looks nice there see how that works any sign that I'm coming through from the other side so it's wet so I'm gonna put a few more in see how it goes I think I'll do six of these go ahead and spot them here if I have to come back and put three more in the middle I'll do it all right that's what it looks like check make sure we don't have any cracks or anything else that's working good no sign at all that that's coming through I'm going to go with that size of the fastener. So now I'm left with the with a half inch spacing here. So if I want to feed pollen patties or anything like that, there'll be plenty of room to do that. All right, like I said, I'm going to finish I'm going to finish painting these before I apply. I may build some more of these. I'll, I'll cut some more foam, but I won't put any more in until all this is painted up nicely because I don't want to get paint on my on this and just you know it doesn't really matter but it looks nice
I hope you all enjoyed that video and my take on the migratory uh, outer cover or lid. Now take care. Thanks for watching.